This is a daguerreotype portrait of Lucretia Mott. Uh, Lucretia Mott was a devout Quaker whose commitment to ending slavery and securing rights for women became the defining features of her life. Her activism uh, rattled some of the more conservative members of her faith, but that didn't prevent her from taking a very active role in the abolition movement. In 1833, she was with William Lloyd Garrison, the noted abolitionist and editor, when he launched the American Anti-Slavery Society. And a short time later, she helped to co-found the Philadelphia Female Anti-Slavery Society. Her commitment to women's rights was really a natural outgrowth of her work in the abolition movement. And in 1848, she joined with Elizabeth Cady Stanton in launching the women's suffrage movement at the convention at Seneca Falls that uh, was designed to, to draw attention to the plight of women. This daguerreotype uh, was produced in the studio of Marcus Aurelius Root, who was one of the premier daguerreotypists in Philadelphia. The portrait, of course, is of Lucretia Mott, who is shown in her simple Quaker garb. It's one of the best examples of the fine art of daguerreotypy, and Marcus Aurelius Root was one of the most uh, well-known practitioners of the daguerreotype process. He opened his studio in Philadelphia in 1846, and in 1864 would publish the first history of photography in the United States. The daguerreotype process was introduced in 1839 by Frenchman Louis-Jacques Mandet Daguerre. The first daguerreotypes were made in the United States at the end of September in 1839. The daguerreotype is a is produced using a plate of silver-plated copper, which has been sensitized to light by exposing it to various chemicals. Those chemicals include bromine and iodine. Once the plate has been sensitized, it's placed in the camera, the lens cap is removed, and the plate is exposed. After exposure, the latent image is developed by fuming it with heated mercury. After that, it's fixed by washing it with a solution of sodium thiosulfate. It's then rinsed with distilled water, dried, and toned with gold chloride. Daguerreotypes are typically packaged with a brass mat, a cover glass that was then sealed with a paper tape and placed in a, in a handsome, uh, small leather-covered case. The daguerreotype has a highly polished mirror-like surface. In fact, it was described in the 19th century as the mirror with a memory. To see a daguerreotype, you have to hold it at just the right angle so that the light plays properly across the image. It's tremendously detailed and the clarity of a daguerreotype is really exceptional. It's one of the reasons why when daguerreotypes were first introduced, they created a sense of wonder uh, in anyone who, who viewed them.